If there was one thing my dad taught me when growing up, it was these five simple words. And I heard them a lot growing up. Fish do not have hands. Now as a young angler just learning how to fish and just grasping everything that's around him while your dad catches a bunch of fish, it never really clicked in my head until I got a little bit older that he was basically telling me when you feel a fish just jerk. Whoa, 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 whoa. Why? What's so crazy about that? Oh, that's wrong. You've got to give him a second to bite and then set the hook. That would be right if you were catching a bass or you were catfishing or something like that. But when a crappy bites, you send that sucker to the moon. Now, truth be told, I've been on hundreds and hundreds of other people's boats teaching them how to use live scope, their electronics, whatever, how to catch a fish. And I've seen it time and time again, but I never really understood what separates me. Cause you know, I feel like just an average person out there catching fish. But when you get me toe and toe with somebody that doesn't quite understand stuff, it makes you look like you know what you're doing, I guess. But all it really boiled down to was, you know, finding the fish and whatever. But after you find the fish, catching the fish was the most important part and feeling every single bite is what separated me from an average angler, I guess, because I catch fish when they don't even bite. We're gonna cover that in a little bit though. Now see, crappy when they bite, they're not really like a bass eating a 12 inch worm or a catfish eating a cut piece of cut bait that you threw out on the bottom. Yeah, you gotta give those time because they're gonna eat the tail of the worm, they're gonna check out the cut bait, and then they're finally gonna, you know, go for it and put the whole thing in their mouth. But the way a crappie eats is kind of like a rock hitting the water where it makes that plunger effect or you know using your plunger in the toilet is they open their gills really wide and it sucks the bait into their mouth they don't go up and just nibble on your your jig or your minnow or whatever this is your jig they're going to open their mouth and the water is going to push it in and then you hit them there is no second guessing anything when, when they open their mouth and that jig flies in there and you hit them, you want that hook in the top of their mouth or in the, the roof of their mouth in the back. Now, if they open their gills and it goes in, you're like, oh, I got a bite. I don't feel him no more. That's because he's done put it in his mouth. Oh, I don't like that. And he sp spit it back out. And this happens in seconds. It's not a a uh, 10 second deal where he sucks in his mouth man i don't know if this is real oh well i don't like it let me spit no he, boom i don't like it out and if you don't hit him in that you know one second uh interval that's a fish you missed so I, I do have some tips on how to figure out what a bite is i'm going to give a little demonstration it's not going to be the best thing in the world but it's something that you could practice at home hopefully to get you a little bit better at just hitting them. Like it, if you grew up bass fishing, cat fishing, whatever, bluegill fishing, you've got to get the mindset that you don't have to wait. And speaking of bass fishing, if you throw a jig, you don't have to wait on that either because when a bass eats a crawfish, unless that crawfish is really big, it's all going in. Just hit them. So I'm going to give a little demonstration real quick and then we're gonna talk about the hardest bite to detect and why it's important to have certain things going on. To do this demonstration, it might seem a little childish. I, I'm not gonna to lie to you. Uh, it's like 100 something degrees out there. I'm not going out there to get my spinning rod. So the only rod I got in here is this bait caster. It's my jerk bait rod. But the same principle goes. So what you're gonna do, man, it's a cheap rod. Anyway, what, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your line, you're gonna go tie it to something. All right, and then you're gonna loosen your drag. I mean, I use a bait caster fishing anyway, so for the major majority of the year, I use a bait caster. Summertime, I do use spinning rod, but you wanna tie it to something and you get your drag so when you hit it, it sounds good. You know what I'm saying? It's so just so you feel better about yourself. But tie it to something and you want to take your finger 
and put it on your line. Your line is what separates you from that fish. Your rod does not matter. If you put your finger on the line, right here, even on the bait caster, I put my finger right here, and on the spinning rod, it'd be in the same spot. Because this is gonna be your trigger. Because this line is connected to the jig. And that jig is going in that fish's mouth. So that's the closest point of contact with that fish. I just kind of wanted to clarify why, you know, we put our finger on the line. Now you can't put your finger on the line when you're winding. It don't work. I wish it, I wish I could design a rod that I could put my finger on the line and wind at the same time. I haven't figured that out yet. But when you cast out and you, you know, your pendulum back to the boat, your vertical jigging, whatever, finger on the line all the time. Now what you're gonna do is you can get a buddy to help you, but if you got a buddy, a wife, a kid, something, but you wanna put your finger on the line and you wanna tap your rod. Just tap it. See, I'm tapping with my index finger. Now, you kinda of wanna make this second nature that you just take your middle finger and gum up. And that's when you set the hook. If I break this rod, it's gonna be all right. But you wanna do random intervals. You just, da 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 middle finger, bam. Da 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 See what I mean? But if you have somebody helping you, you can tap the rod up here and they can tap the butt of the rod and that's when you set the hook. But you wanna do it instantly. You don't wanna be like, oh, I think I felt it. No, you, won't. you wanna do this until when it hits, you hit. Now I know this is crazy and you're probably like, man, what the hell is Steven smoking? But you've got to cut the time out on the water. You, if you're out on the water and you're trying to learn that, it's gonna take you a year, two years, whatever, to get to that point. But if you can cut the time in half by practicing, you know, five, 10 minutes a day before you go out to try to feel something different, I mean, that could be 10 more fish in your boat that you never would've caught to begin with. So now let's talk about the hardest bite in crappy fishing. And it's the pressure bite. I'm gonna grab this rod again, hold on. The pressure bite, nobody, I've never seen a video other than one I made probably last year. Nobody talks about the pressure bite. And I, I believe a lot of people don't feel it. Even veterans that have been fishing their whole life, they don't feel it. But it comes down to using the same rod, the same line, the same lures, the same size jig heads. And, you know, I've been throwing a 164 for probably 20 years. Now I have, you know, switched rods and it will take me a couple weeks to get used to a new rod. But knowing what your rod weighs in your hand, knowing what that line feels like, and knowing what size jig head you have on the end of everything is so critical to get big fish. Now, what do I mean by that, Stephen? You're sounding crazier than your little demonstration. I, I get that. I get that. But if you're holding your rod and you put your hand right here, it starts to feel heavier. So when you got your line connected to a jig, and those bigger fish will engulf that jig and miss, like, I, I don't know how they do it, but they put the whole jig in their mouth and they don't clamp on the line. You never feel it. But your rod or your line will get heavier. Now, if you actually mentally prepare for this, you're gonna catch the biggest fish of your life. Now, this is one of the biggest YouTube secrets I have ever given away. So if you made it this far in the video, please hit that thumbs up button for me. Let me know down below if you learned this tip. But if you, if you throw out and your jig's messed up, like I've been catching 10, 15 fish, I've been re-threading it on there any way, shape, or form, because that's what I do. If I throw out there and that jig slides down, I feel it. When, I, when this pendulum back to the boat, it's different. I know something's wrong with that jig. If my line wraps up around the split shot, I know instantly when it's in the water. Now, it may just be a me thing. I don't know. I'm not very self-centered or cocky about it. 
but it could just be I'm just good like that. I don't know. But I'm saying is when you get a pressure bite, your rod's going to get heavier and your line's going to get heavier. And you've got to get it in your head to hit that fish. Like I, fish don't have hands. <laughs> I've told a bunch of clients this. Man, my dad used to tell me that all the time. But they were like, oh, I got a bite. I'm going to hit the fish, man. What are you doing? But a pressure bite is one of the most satisfying things in the world. Now, learning this, it's going to take time. It's not, it's not one that you can practice at home. But if something feels different, hit that fish. You're going to lose jig heads. You're going to lose jigs. You're going to break a rod in half because you're like, what the heck is going on? But the moment you hook into a two and a half to three pound fish that didn't bite, that's when it's all gonna be worth it. So hopefully you learned something in today's teaching course. And this was a fun video, so. Uh, subscribe if you haven't. Check out crappymanjigs.com for the best finesse jigs on the market, hand made by moi. And I'll catch y'all on the next one.